Welcome to episode 38 of Discovering Nagasaki from a Local. My name is Chad. In my ongoing weekly vlogs, you can experience everyday life in this scenic and fascinating part of Japan. This week, Denise Rollheiser, Daniel Hazen, and Kathy Garrett were able to correctly answer both of last week's vlog questions. Thank you for answering my challenging questions. The first question from last week was, why is there a wire around the field that I plowed with my tractor? The answer is to keep out wild boar. The second question from last week was, how many toys did I videotape myself going under in Omota Park? The answer is two toys. Around our school and cafe, there are many types of flowers and fruit trees that have sprung to life recently, like the leaves on this cherry tree the cherries on this sakurambo tree, the leaves on this bampeyu grapefruit tree, the leaves on this momiji tree, the flowers on this blueberry bush, the wild rose on this trellis, the hydrangea leaves on this ajisai, the persimmon leaves on this kaki tree, the loquat on this biwa tree, the fruit on this dai dai tree, the yaezakura blossoms on this cherry tree, and the plums on this ume tree. And now for today's crash course in kanji root particles. Group Y kanji root particles include box, division, counter for animals, huge, Minister, Oversee, Massive, Horse, Eagle, Rap, Bow, Condolence, Cook Up, Dirty, Think, Give, and Woo. Next week I will cover Group Z kanji root particles. In today's vlog, I will show you how I cook a delicious pork and rice dish called katsudon. I will also give you a tour of the terminus station of Japan's next bullet train, Nagasaki Station. Let's get started. In order to make one serving of katsudon, pork cutlets with rice, I will use one pork cutlet, mitsuba leaves, wild parsley from our garden as a garnish, two pinches of black pepper, two pinches of salt, a quarter of a medium-sized onion, one egg, one cup of water, one tablespoon of mirin, one tablespoon of sugar, three grams, half a package of agodashi, one tablespoon of soy sauce, about one-eighth of a cup of flour, and one-eighth of a cup of breadcrumbs. I will start by making the katsudon sauce. I'll cut the onion into narrow slices on this cutting board. After I add the onion slices to this frying pan, I will add one cup of water, three grams of agodashi, one tablespoon of sugar, One tablespoon of soy sauce and one tablespoon of mirin. This mixture needs to be simmered for a few minutes after this. Now I have to make shallow slices into the pork cutlet 
and then tenderize it with a wooden roller. This prevents the pork cutlet from curling up when it's deep fried. I have to do this to both sides. Then I will add a pinch of pepper and a pinch of salt to both sides of the pork cutlet. I've already mixed up the egg with a fork and put about one quarter of it in this plate with a small amount of flour. I'll now coat the cutlet with egg and then use a brush to apply it an even surface. If you don't have a brush you can dip the cutlet in the flour by hand. I let the katsudon sauce cool down a little bit after I simmered the onions. Now I'll check the hot oil in the other frying pan to see if it's ready. It's not quite hot enough yet. An oil temperature of about 350 degrees Celsius is best for this job. Now I'll finish coating the cutlet in flour and then use another plate to coat the cutlet with breadcrumbs. It's up to you how much flour and breadcrumbs you use. You have to use your fingers to cover up the meat with breadcrumbs. Now I'll put the cutlet in the hot oil. I have been deep frying the pork cutlet for about 8 minutes. I'm using long chopsticks to rotate and turn the cutlet in the hot oil. It's ready when it's golden brown. I'll let the oil cutlet sit on a paper towel to remove the excess oil. Next to the mitzvah that I have sliced up, I will slice the pork cutlet into thin strips on the cutting board. Now I'll slide these cutlet strips on the onion sauce in the frying pan. On top of the cutlet I will pour the remainder of the egg I used earlier. I will heat up this mixture in the frying pan for about one minute. The secret to making good katsudon is adding most of the egg before serving and cooking the egg for a short time. You want the egg to be runny when it's served. Now I'll turn on the stove at a low heat. After about a minute, it's time to add the contents of this frying pan on top of some steamed rice. I'll use a spatula to transfer the hot contents. How much rice you use is up to you. Usually katsudon is served in quite a large bowl, like this one. Oops, I missed some of the onions. After adding the mitsuba strips, It'll be piping hot and ready to eat. Quick, easy, and very delicious. I'm now on the pedestrian platform in front of Nagasaki train station. Below me you can see a tram station and a lot of vehicle traffic. As I pan to the right you can see Hotel New Nagasaki and Amu Plaza, Amusement Plaza, shopping center. This pedestrian platform is long and wide and gives you a great view of downtown Nagasaki. This station was originally opened in April of 1905 and it accommodates more than 10,000 passengers daily. It's the 13th largest train station in Kyushu. From inside the station you can see the pedestrian platform and a statue of a Peron boatsman. I'll take you down this second floor walkway past Amu Plaza. This five-story shopping center is on the left. As you can see, there is a Tokyo Han store on the fourth floor of this shopping center and a large number of restaurants on the fifth floor. On my left is the second floor entrance to Amu Plaza. Behind me you can see the original entrance to the train lines that service Nagasaki Station up until March 28th of last year. At the end of this walkway is the entrance to Nagasaki's JR Kyushu Hotel, and on the right is a Teishoku restaurant. 
I'll take you down this escalator to give you a closer look at what is left of the station that was closed down one year ago. From this vantage point you get a great view of the large courtyard below. On my right is the first floor entrance to Amu Plaza. This large covered courtyard has become a thoroughfare for passengers to access trains at an adjacent and newly built train station. The new station here was built to accommodate the bullet trains that are scheduled to start running one year from now, if all goes well. On my right you can see where the previous ticket vending machines were located. And up ahead you can see where all of the previous train tracks used to run out of Nagasaki Station. Construction is still underway here. One year ago, this covered walkway was set up to link the old and new stations. In the distance, you can see the northeast side of Nagasaki's new station. It's a four minute walk to the new station, so I'll speed up the journey down this walkway. Up ahead you can see the passengers turnstiles and a tourist information center. On my right is a small convenience store. And on my left are Nagasaki Station's new ticket vending machines. This is a newly paved street just outside the southwest entrance to Nagasaki Station. Over on the right is an elevated walkway that is still under construction. I'll take you into the station to show you what it looks like from this side. These doors were inaccessible the last time I came to the station. That was back in November of last year, so this is still quite new. On the right is the new Japan Travel Bureau Ticket Center, just beside the ticket vending machines. I've just taken the escalator up to track one. I'm heading back to Omoto right now. My train leaves at 1606 and I've got lots of time before it does. Up ahead on the right is the two-car train that I'll be traveling on. I'll take you to the other side of this platform. On the right you can see where the track ends at this terminus station. Train passengers can't travel any further south past Nagasaki. This is the view in the other direction. And now for this week's challenging questions. First, if you include the water, how many ingredients did I show you at the beginning of my cooking demo? Second, what is the name of the convenience store that I showed you in Nagasaki's new station? Be the first to correctly answer both of these questions in the comment section below. I will announce the first three people who do so at the beginning of episode 39. You can find a complete list of the contents of my vlog episodes on the Facebook link listed below. And you can watch all of my vlog episodes on the online YouTube playlist. Today's B-roll involved cooking, so in episode 39 my B-roll will involve baking. See you next week.